Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. We're going to be putting together a coral reef using geometry nodes. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to make a system that's like a coral reef using geometry nodes, using some other uh, cool effects. We're also going to talk a little bit about how to fake caustics. To get started, let's go ahead and set up our camera and get our scene uh, in the right position. So I'm just going to open up my side here and click on the view tab and I'll click camera to view to lock my camera to view. I'll jump into my camera and I'm just going to you know, pick a nice view. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to set up my scene so that I'm along the X axis and then the Y axis is side to side. This way it's just easier for me to move things around in the scene without having to see all my cardinal directions. I can just know I can push things on the X to get them to go away or come closer to me. Now I'm going to make my camera more cinematic. So I'm going to click on my camera. I'll go to the camera tab and oh, sorry, go to the printer tab up here and I'm going to take my X scale my X resolution and I'm going to type in my height so 1080 and I'm going to multiply by 2.35 and that's going to make the cinemascope ratio which looks really cool. Then I'm going to come to my camera and I'm going to go to viewport display and turn up passport 2 to darken the outside of my frame so I can focus on my image. I'm going to just scroll in and get rid of lock camera to view and I'll turn that off and I can also delete this light because we're not going to need that for now. Um, I'm going to get rid of this cube as well. We're not going to start with that. We're going to make some uh, rock mounds first that we can have our coral kind of uh, growing on. So I'm going to create an isosphere by going Shift A and then click on isosphere. And I'm just using this because it's a nice kind of object, creates some interesting geometry and uh, it just kind of looks cool. So I'm going to take this and I'll bring it up just for kind of looking at it squarely. I'm going to go to my wrench icon for my modifiers and I'm going to add in a subdivision surface. This will increase the resolution of my mesh. Then I'm going to add in a displacement modifier. And at first, nothing's going to happen except it's going to get larger. I'm going to click on new to create a new uh, displacement texture. And I'm going to click on this little icon, which is show texture and tab, or I can just come over here and click the texture tab button. Under type, I'm going to switch it off the default, which is image or movie, and I'm going to set it to clouds. And this will create some noise that will help to distort my image. I'm going to make it uh, a lot bigger so it doesn't distort it so much. And you can see you get this nice sort of irregular rocky shape when we do that. I'm going to come back to my wrench and I'm going to set the coordinates for my displacement from local, which means base the coordinates on the position, like the local uh, coordinates of this object. So if I move this around, you can see it stays the same, which might be the effect you're after. But I want to use this as like a procedural rock that I can move through my scene and let it be different automatically. So I'm going to change my coordinates. I want it to base the texture coordinates on global, which means look at where this object is in the world of my scene and create the texture coordinates based on that. So now as I move it, it's going to be basically moving through the texture, moving through that noise that's been generated. So it's going to change the shape based on where it is in the scene, which is pretty sick. So I'm going to create a position for this. I'm going to just place a few of these around. I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab. And I'm also I'm just going to delete the bottom vertexes because I don't I don't really need those. So I'm going to hit B to box select. I'm going to make sure you turn on the X-ray mode. This allows us to see through to grab the vertexes that are behind as well. Hit B to box select, hold down shift and drag. That will deselect the bottom vertexes. Um, actually, I did that wrong. It's the opposite. So I actually want to invert that. So I go up here to select and click invert. And that will invert the selection. Now I can hit X to delete and vertices. And now we've got this object. It's just one sided, which is which is what I want. All right, now I'm going to position a few of these around. You can scale these up as well. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift D, grab this, and I'm going to hold down Shift and uh, hit Z when I hit grab. So what you do there is you hit G to grab, Shift Z, and that will allow you to move it on everything except for the Z uh, position. So I can just move these guys around. Um, I might see what it looks like if I make a little bit more mesh on my subdivision surface. That actually looks a little bit, a little bit better. I'll do that. I'll set it to three. I'll also right click and shade smooth. I think that looks good. I might go even further to four. Okay, so I finished filling out my scene and I've just moved my camera a little bit just to get a slightly better angle. Now this one is quite large as I've scaled it up. You can see how extreme all the displacement is. So I'm going to come to this displacement here, bring the strength down on that. That might help too. 
Okay, now that I've got my sort of rocky landscape set up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get some materials working on all these guys. Now, what I can do with that is I can select one of them, go to the material tab, and I can create a new material and call this rock. And then what I can do is I can actually just select everything except for my camera. I can assign rock and then click this little down arrow and go copy material to select it. That'll put this material on everything. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up sort of the look of our scene before we get into any coral or caustics. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the rendered view. Now we don't have any lights in our scene yet, so we're not gonna get any color because um, there's nothing to you know, bounce the light around. So we need to add in some light and we need to add in some color on our materials. First thing we do is some light. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna create a light sunlight. And I'm gonna just rotate it around and just find kind of an interesting spot for it. And I kind of like where that is, to be honest. I'm gonna duplicate it by hitting Shift D and then grab and Z and I'm gonna rotate around the other way. And this will give me just a little bit of a subtle variation where I get some rim light and this other main light. I'm also gonna take my two lights and I'm gonna change their color. I'm gonna push them a little bit into the blue, maybe a bit of a greenish blue. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change uh, the overall look of the world that we're in. So I'm gonna take my timeline and I'm gonna switch it to my shader editor. And then I'm gonna take it from object to world. So instead of working on an object shader, we're gonna work on the world shader. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create a volume scatter node. This will create some volume in our scene. I'll plug this here into the void. Now you see everything will disappear, but that's because we've got this fog that's in our scene. Now, if I turn the density down slowly, you're gonna to start to see everything up here. Now I can play with this anisotropy and that will focus the uh, focus around my lights. Oops, I'm gonna make sure I don't have camera, locked camera to view turned on still. Uh, and you can see if we kind of look up a little bit, we're gonna get this bright haze kind of around where our sun lamp is. Now let's, uh, play with that just a little bit more. I do like it focused a little bit around the light and I do want the haze to be kind of thick because we're we're underwater. Take my other sun lamp. I'm going to rotate it around a little bit more and just play with it to see if we can get a spot that looks nice. Okay, so now let's do this rock texture. So I'm going to switch from my world. I'm going to go to my, actually, let's take our background and let's set it to be a bit of a blue as well and maybe brighten it up some. So I'm going to get a map range note and I'm going to bring it here and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So from max, I'll turn this up to three, I think. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring that noise more uh, fully like into the entire material. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to also create a bump node and I'll take my color ramp just as it is and I'll put it into the height and I'll take that and put it in the normal. And then I'm going to take my distance and I'm going to drop it down to something like 0.1 maybe, 0.3, which looks pretty good. And I'll adjust my strength a little bit. I don't want it to be too full on, but it's pretty good. I'm also gonna take my roughness and turn it up because when you're underwater, you really don't get that shiny look on everything. That's something that happens when things are out of the water. You get a little bit of it, but I don't want too much of it. Bring the specular down as well. And now I feel like it could use maybe like a micro bump as well into this system. So I might create a noise and I'll turn this scale like way, way, way up. You can see we're getting this 
sharp detail in there. If I turn it up, you can really see it. Um, I might take the roughness up as well and the detail up. It will really make it super rough. And then I'll back it off. And the next thing we need to do is begin to place some coral in our scene and really brighten the scene up with that coral. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, one that's more of like a sea anemone kind of uh, style to it. So what I can do is I'll just jump out of my camera and I'll turn off rendered view. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just hit, um, turn on my controllers again, I'll uh, hit Shift A. What we're going to do is we're going to go Mesh UV Sphere and we'll grab this up so we can see it clearly. And uh, what we'll do is we will um, take this UV sphere, we'll go to Particles, and we'll click the plus symbol to create a new particle system. And we're going to create some hair. I'm going to take the length and bring it right down, uh, something like this. I've got it to 0.56. I'm going to come down to Children, and I'm going to turn it on Simple. And then I'm going to come down to, uh, let's see, Roughness, Clumping, and Kink. I'm going to take the render amount down to 10 and I'm going to set the kink to radial um, and then I can just play with things like the amplitude and stuff just to get get a little bit of like a wavy look to it. I might turn the display amount down even to like five and the render amount as well. Play with this length some more. Okay, now that I've got this hair, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the wrench icon and I'm going to click on this convert button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make this uh, mesh object, which is uh, identical to the, the the fur, the hair. So I can take that sphere now and I can delete it. And now I've got these mesh points, uh, which are pretty cool. Now what I'll do is I'll take this mesh, I'm going to convert it. So type in convert, and we're going to convert to a curve. Now you can see it's a curve object. If I go in there to edit mode, you can see all those curve points. I'm going to right click, I'm going to set the spline type to Bezier, and I'll set the handle type to automatic. That'll make them nice and curvy. You can probably see a few of these in here now that this nice kind of curvy shape to it. All right. Now, what I can do with this is I can go over here to geometry, leave edit mode and come down to depth and I can turn up the depth and you can see you get this nice tubular pattern and I can fill the caps just to give them those little end caps. All right, let's uh, go ahead and jump back in our camera and let's position this thing in our scene somewhere and Get it looking right. I'm also going to go object set origin origin to geometry. That'll put the origin right in the middle there. And then we can just position this thing somewhere interesting. And let's head back over to rendered view and go to our material tab. And I'm going to click new to create a new material. And we'll call this a uh, coral one. All right. Now for this one, let's make it a really bright color. Let's go for like a bright pink, maybe. And I'm going to turn on my subsurface scattering. Now, what that does is it allows light to kind of pass into and through the object. So I'll pick another kind of nice purplish pink color and I'll turn that right up. And I'll turn my roughness up, my specular down and just get this thing positioned somewhere, somewhere that works. Now, we are looking at a situation where we need more light in our scene. It's quite dark at the moment. Um, and so I'm going to take one of these lights and I'm going to play with uh, the brightness settings. So I'm going to turn up my world brightness. So if you go to the world tab, you can come over here and change the color. I'm just going to brighten up the color of my world a bit. Uh, not too much, but just a little bit there. Now I'm going to come back over to my uh, rock texture and I'm actually going to separate out the color ramp. And I'm going to do a different one so I can change the color specifically on the color ramp. And I'll take these and I will brighten them up and maybe push them a little bit into the blue as well. Now, I don't think cool, the cool thing we do with these uh, little sea anemones that we've got is we can add in a wave modifier to them. And we can take the time and turn the speed right down something really slow, something like 0.01. It's going to create a really nice kind of flowy motion to it. All right, now let's uh, label this object coral one. And now let's make a second piece of coral. Now this next piece of coral we're going to make is like a brain coral kind of thing. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to create another isosphere. I'm going to do a similar setup to these rocks. I'm going to create shift A to create a new isosphere. And I'm going to add in a subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to add in a displacement 
modifier, and I will actually just select uh, my texture from that from the previous uh, from the rocks. I'll turn up my uh, viewport and render settings there, and I'll do the same thing where I'll set the uh, coordinates to global. The way it'll move around for me. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll right click, I'll shade smooth, and I'm just going to position this somewhere on one of these rocks like that. And I'm going to create a new material. And this one I'll call uh, Coral 2. Back to my shader editor. And I'm going to create a Voronoi texture. Now, the Voronoi texture will give us a really nice pattern. I'll switch this into the emission so we can see it. Create a color ramp. And I'll stick that here. And I'll just bring these in a little bit closer so we can begin to see that contrast come out. And I'll change my scale. We'll just turn it right up, something like, like this. All right, let's plug this into the uh, base color. And I'll create a bump node as well. And we'll plug this color into the height and the normal into the normal. All right, now let's take these colors and I will brighten up this section here. And I'll go for like maybe a bit of a blue. And then uh, let's go for like a green, a bit of a vibrant green color. I'll take my roughness up and my specular right down. I might just make a second pip by clicking that plus symbol, and drag it here to the very beginning, and just creating one more color. I'm going to take my bump distance down to 0.1 and my strength down as well a little bit. And I'll also try taking my randomness and playing with that. In fact, let's switch. Let's go from F1. Let's go distance to edge and see what that looks like. It's going to change the way things read a little bit, but oh, that looks cool. That actually looks a bit better. There we go. All right, so we've got two types of coral. I'll call this one coral two. All right, now let's take both of these corals and uh, we're going to put them into a new collection. So I'm going to click on my main collection. I'll click plus to create a new collection and I'll drag these guys into it and I'll call this my coral collection. I'm also going to create a collection for all of my isospheres. So I'm going to click plus to create a new collection. I'll grab all my isospheres just to clean up the scene. That way I can collapse that and we can see things. So in my camera view, I'm going to select one of these rocks. I'll just pick this one here. And I'm going to change this from the shader editor, and I'm going to go over to geometry nodes, and I'll click new. I'll type in coral, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit. So at the moment, you can see on my uh, modifier stack, geometry nodes is a modifier, and it happens after my subdivision surface and my displacement. So what I can use now is it's going to displace and subdivide and make the rock look like it does, and then it's going to apply the geometry nodes effect on top of that. I want to first I want to get is a point distribute node. I'm going to drop that here. You can see that my object now disappears. So I need to join whatever I'm going to do up with the original geometry. So remember, everything's being piped in here. The original geometry is here and it's being replaced by this point cloud that's being generated by the point distribute and then it's piping out to the output. So this is what it becomes. I can put a join geometry node right here and stick this in and then bring this one in. And what this is doing is it's taking the original geometry and it's joining it with whatever we do down here. So this is how we can retain it. Now, after I point distribute, I'm going to turn my density right down to like 0.1 or even less than that, 0.01. And I'm going to create a point instance node. This is a node that will instance an object or a collection of objects wherever one of our points are um, generated that are across the object from the point distribute node. So I'm going to take my collection and I'm going to switch here and I'm going to grab the coral collection. Now, I don't want it to do the whole collection. I just wanted to pick randomly between the objects that are in this collection. So I can have a bunch of different coral types in here and it will pull from all of them to do this effect. Now I want them to uh, distribute them across the surface. So right now my density is turned right down. So I might turn it up a little bit. You can see we got a problem. Things are way too big. So we need to shrink them down. So we can come over here and we can go. Uh, let's actually create a random attribute randomize value. 
and I'll drop this here. And we're just going to type scale. And this will randomly scale the points between two values. And I'm going to do it between zero and let's try 0.1 maybe. So we'll go from 0.1 to 0 0.3. Now I want to adjust the material a little bit on my coral here. So I'm going to go over to my shader editor and uh, I just want to play around with it a little bit more. Um, I might take the subsurface down some. And I'm going to go much more saturated, much brighter with it. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab a gradient texture node. And I want to grab a color ramp. And I'll take the factor into the factor and the color I'll pipe into the color. And you can see we're getting these different variations across it, which looks pretty cool. Actually, what might look better than a gradient ramp is let's grab some noise, but we'll make it really, uh, really large. So type in noise and we'll take the factor of the noise and we'll plug it in. This will create a slightly different pattern on all of these guys. Now what I can do is I can select my other rocks, go to my geometry nodes editor, click new, and then just select my coral geometry node. And you can see it's going to work. Now you're going to get some where they kind of appear in weird bits, don't quite look right. But if you just roll the seed, I'm going to add in a, a translate to bring them all down so I don't get any that kind of appear up like that. So I'm going to grab a translate, point translate node. I'll just drop it in here and I'll just drop it down on the Z just a little bit. So just lower all of them down. A touch should help. And I'll just grab a few more of these. Now they are going to be affected by the scale of these individual rocks. So we need to take these guys as well and apply their scale. So I'm going to go F3 apply scale. Now you're going to see they're going to appear much more uniform across the surface. I'm going to take my main light that's creating all the god rays and I'm going to really push it into more saturated blue and that's going to help things out a lot. I'm also going to go back into my world shader and uh, I'm going to take the uh, density and I'm going to turn it up to 0.1, make things a little bit denser and then I'm going to play with this in Instatropy. And the next thing we need to do is the caustics. Now this is a really great trick for creating caustics in a scene. So I'm going to select uh, my rock here. Make sure I've got it selected. And uh, I'm going to switch over from world to object. And we're going to make a little object that we can uh, put into all of our materials. So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to grab a Furonai shader. Just like this. And I'm going to grab a color ramp just like this. And I'm going to set this uh, to, uh, let's see, distance to edge. We'll try that first. And then I'm going to plug the color into the emission. And now you can see if I flip these and bring this black really close to the white, we're going to start getting something that looks a lot like those caustic uh, refractive rays that you get across things. Um, I can increase the scale. Um, also, what I can do is I can come over here and give a coordinate, texture coordinate node. And in my scene, I can create an empty. And I'll just call this empty caustics. Come back to my shader and I'm going to select the caustics object and I'll use the object coordinate as the vector. This means that wherever uh, this empty is positioned in my scene is going to affect the layout of this texture. So as I move this through my scene, it's going to move the caustics. And so we can animate that to help it um, really give this some life. I'm going to bring the scale back down so that it's not too huge. There we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to figure out what's facing up and what's facing down on our object. So I need to get a geometry node. And with the geometry node, just make a little bit more room here. Getting a bit tight. I'm 
I want to use the normal and I want to separate. I'm going to separate X, Y, Z node. And I'm going to plug this in here. And then if we look at the Z, I'll just plug this straight in the emission so you can see it and I'll explain what's going on. The normal is basically the direction of every face on our object, on the geometry. So every face is pointing a certain direction. And what we've done is we've taken those directions and we've piped them into a separate X, Y, Z. And so we've separated out the Z, the X, and the Y directions that they're facing. And by just looking at the Z, we're looking at basically show us only the faces that are pointing on the Z direction. So it's showing us positive and negative on the Z right now, so white and black. And you can see what the effect of that is. You see everything that's basically facing upwards is being shaded white. Everything that's facing in other directions is dark. So this way we can use this to kind of cut it out of the shadows, cut the caustics out of the shadows. So I can grab a mix RGB shader. I can drop it here and I can take my color and pipe it right into here, set this to multiply, and then turn my factor all the way up to one. I also want to click clamp. That will clamp the values. Now you can see it's going to disappear. The caustics aren't going to appear in the shadows. They're only going to appear in the bits that are facing up, which is pretty cool. Now we can also introduce a little bit more noise into the caustics by getting a noise texture, popping it right here and grabbing a mix RGB. We can drop that right here. Sorry, this is getting very, very cramped. I'll pull this up so you can actually see what we're doing a little bit better. We'll take the factor and plug it into the color, and then we can basically use this to determine how much distortion do we want on these caustics. I'm gonna turn my emission strength up to something like two, and I'm gonna come over to my camera tab. I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And I'm gonna change the color of my emission to more of a blue color like that. Now it wouldn't be perfectly even like it is here. So I need to put in a little bit more noise to this. So we're gonna create one more noise node to do that. So I'm gonna grab a, another mix RGB, throw it right here at the end. We'll grab a noise texture. Put the factor in and we'll set this to multiply. And I'm going to turn it all the way up. And then what we need to do as well is we need to create a bit more contrast in this noise texture. So we need to add a color ramp and just drop it in right there. Now you can see we can pull this in and this is going to help create more variation. I'm going to set this from linear to ease. That will smooth that transition even further. Now, by bringing these two close together, we're creating a lot of contrast in this noise texture. By multiplying it in by just 0.9, it means it's never going to go fully, dis not going to make it fully disappear. So there's going to be a little bit left. Turning that emission strength up to 10 is going to make these hotspots really bright. And that creates this really nice kind of underwater feel where the caustics are kind of magnifying as they, as they double over each other. Um, now, what we need to do is take this little system that we've just made. I'm just going to select all these nodes. With all those selected, I'm going to hit Control G, and then we'll group them. Now I've got this little node group right here. And just where it says node group here, we're going to type in caustics as well. And now whenever we go Shift A, we can type in caustics. You can see it pops up as a node. So that means I can come over to my coral shader, go Shift A, type in caustics. There it is. I can plug it straight into the emission. Do the same for the brain coral. The only trick is I have to make sure I set the emission to be the same as what I've set on uh, my other, on my rocks, which I believe is 10. Now I'm just finishing it off by uh, adding in a few custom pieces where I feel like the geometry nodes isn't quite filling things out. 
in a way that I want. I always kind of tend to end up doing a little bit of custom by hand uh, stuff to really kind of land an image. Now what's cool is you can see we can move these rocks around and everything is procedural. The rock is procedural. The geometry node system with the coral is procedural. We can even duplicate these guys and they easily replicate and come along for the ride, which is very, very cool. Hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned a lot. Uh, I hope you feel more empowered uh, to use geometry nodes in some pretty simple ways to help you uh, propagate stuff through a scene. And uh, hope you also picked up some really cool tips like the caustics. Hope you use that and uh, find that really useful in your future projects. So thanks again for watching this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that like button as well. Um, if you want to find out more things that are coming down the channel, make sure you ring the bell to get notifications. And don't forget to check out the Patreon where we've got tons of live Live streams, including a live stream, about a two hour live stream where I made a similar image to this. We prototyped this uh, scene and I explored a lot of different options. Um, they're really great value if you want to um, get a lot more um, tips and tricks, you go check those out. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. I'll see you later. Bye.